Color temperature. It's an important topic that videographers, photographers, and designers should all be familiar with. But what does it mean when something looks warm? What's 5600 Kelvin? And why do I look really blue right now? We'll answer all of those questions in the next few minutes. Keep watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the Wondershare YouTube channel, where you can find unlimited inspiration to build your creative future. If you've only been doing vlogging on your smartphone or you've been taking photos with auto white balance, you might not be familiar with the concept of color temperature. That's okay, we're gonna explain it today. In short, color temperature is a measure of how blue or yellow a white light source looks, and it's often measured in Kelvins. For example, an older incandescent light bulb will look a lot yellower and will have a lower Kelvin value of about 2700, whereas daylight on the other hand will be much bluer and it will have a much higher Kelvin value of 5600. Light bulbs come in a large variety of color temperatures, so it's always good to check the bulb or the box to see what the color temperature is. Another set of terms you might hear related to color temperature are warm and cool. Even though Kelvin is technically a measure of temperature, we typically call the yellower lower Kelvin values warm and the bluer higher Kelvin values cool. It might seem a little backwards, but we call it this way because as humans we associate yellower colors with fire and bluer colors with water. A term related to color temperature is white balance. The idea is that if you have a white object, like a tissue, and you're shooting it on camera, it might not appear white because the lighting in the room might be a different tint or color temperature to what you're calibrated for. While you can technically adjust the tint, that is how green or magenta your image looks, I find for most cases when I'm adjusting the white balance on camera, I'm really just adjusting the color temperature setting. If you're shooting a shot on a camera or a smartphone with manual settings, I'd highly recommend that you set your white balance to match the light sources in your shot. If you don't, the color in your image might look all wrong. For example, I'm currently being lit by yellower lights, which are roughly 2700 Kelvin. However, my camera is set to daylight, or 5600 Kelvin. As a result, I look really yellow right now. If I go into my camera's white balance settings and adjust the color temperature to be incandescent, or 2700 Kelvin, now the color should look a lot more accurate. So right now I'm outdoors in daylight, but the camera is set to incandescent white balance, which means everything now is gonna look really blue. But if I set my camera to 5600 Kelvin or daylight, things should begin to look a lot more natural. Now, if you got your shot and you found that the white balance still looks off, luckily you can adjust this in a photo or video editing app of your choosing. I'm going to adjust my clip's white balance in Wondershare Filmora Pro, but these principles should apply to whatever photo or video editing app that you use. So I have one of my clips that I shot with the wrong white balance in Filmora Pro, and in the effects panel, I'm going to search for the color temperature effect and drag it onto my clip. Then in the controls panel, I'll be able to adjust this slider and make my image look warmer or cooler. Now for minor adjustments, this method works really well. But for best results, I still recommend you do your best to get the white balance right while taking a photo or video in the first place. So, what have we learned today? Yellower lights, like incandescent lights, are often called warm and have a lower Kelvin value. Bluer lights, like LEDs or daylight, tend to be called cool and have a higher Kelvin value. It's best to match the color temperature in your camera's white balance settings to the lights in the scene. And finally, you can adjust the color temperature of a shot in photo or video editing software. If you're interested in learning more about taking photos in the real world, I highly recommend that you take a look at our recent phone versus DSLR photography video, link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.